Good morning, afternoon, or evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Big B. And Boy Blue. And today's episode, we are talking about our favorite heroes, which the title is Clash of Heroes. Exactly. The Clash of Heroes. Our favorite heroes. Yes. And vigilantes are good guys all around. Eh. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, this was originally i think by you more structured uh and then i said <laughs> structure is stupid so this is yes your anarchy a, man yeah random <laughs> random list on my part um so is yours more structured can i fit mine around yours uh my well since you said it was uh anarchy i was like oh okay I was like, i'll just slap a couple people together in there Perfect. Yeah. I also I, yeah. I think I have to note uh I was kind of I kind of had trouble with this. Um what? I think I have to note that some of these are very specific uh uh how how one writer wrote a character f- from time to time. You know I what I mean? Like- Jeff Lemire. Is this Jeff Lemire? <laughs> uh, uh, no, no. I very I Jeff Lemire ish. <laughs> no, no, no. no. I, I guess I'll, I'll reveal my vagueness. So, one of my favorite characters, but I feel bad saying this because I've only read one thing, is Zatanna. I think she's oh. awesome. Whenever she appears in JL and all that, she's cool. But uh, I really like Grant Morrison's portrayal of Zatanna in. The Seven Soldiers of Victory. So I feel like, I don't know. I feel a little bad saying her because I've only read, like I said, one thing with her significant in it, aside from like other things that she's in, just like popping in. Mm-hmm. But I do like Zatanna. She's a good character. She is. She's actually one of my favorite uh, female characters in the DC universe. And, uh, the thing I read that I think got me more of a fan with her was uh, there's this uh, Scooby Doo team up with the whole uh, <laughs> DC universe, and I and I read it. I'm like, oh my god, this is the greatest, one of the greatest things I ever read because she uh, loses like her dad or something. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So and they they t- try to help her out. She has the Scooby Gang helping her out since they're detectives and. Yeah, it was really cool. It was fun. That's fantastic. Nice read. Yeah. I forget. Uh, have you read Identity Crisis? I have. Okay, so correct me if I'm wrong. So spoilers for Identity Crisis, which I think is over 10 years old now. So yeah, brief spoilers. Uh, she's the one who uh, erases people's memories, correct? Yes. And yeah. it's like pretty shady. Okay, so yeah. what I like about Morrison's portrayal of her in uh, Seven Soldiers is um, she's trying to kind of redeem. Well, she's not even redeeming herself. She's very uh, just blaming herself in it. Mm-hmm. She's like uh, kind of turned her back on being a superhero and um, blames herself for everything. And it's a very interesting point at which mm-hmm. to find Zatanna. So, mm-hmm. anyways, that's that. That's mm-hmm. not the only Seven Soldiers of Victory shout out. Mm-hmm. That will occur today. So <laughs> go read Seven Soldiers of Victory, young people. <laughs> young people. Oh, very nice. Very classy. Yes. Um, or old people. Or middle-aged yeah. people. Yeah. Any, anybody, really. Everybody, just go read it. Yeah. So that uh, that's my first pick. I, that's I, the first pick? Yeah, start off kind of maybe a more obscure character, but yeah. she's a good one. Since you're doing obscure characters... Uh, this one's not so much obscure, considering that uh, he's been in uh, with his brothers in two movies, a slew of cartoon shows, a bunch of action figures, and I do have him tattooed on my arm, and that is Donatello. Oh, my favorite, my favorite of all Ninja Turtles, and he's the one with the bow staff, the purple mask. If you guys are wondering which one that is. And he, uh, rather than use uh, brute force and everything, he's really smart. He makes all the uh, 
the equipment that they need for whatnot. And I, I think that's like really cool. So I always love Donatello. So and like everything. <laughs> yeah. So for the uninitiated like myself, uh, where where's some good Ninja Turtles comics? I'm going to put these down. Where do I start with Ninja uh, Turtles? Start. I have my list somewhere. Uh, the the new run recently that's going on right now by the original author and creator Kevin Eastman. OK, uh, it's really good. It's a you different say, take to what they had before. Kevin Eastman? Yes, sir. Kevin Eastman. I believe that's his name. Yeah, Kevin Eastman. Oh. Sorry, now, folks, my, it, my shelf is like literally right next to me. So, Is that the, is it IDW? Yes, IDW. Ah, here we go. Start with the change is constant. Change is constant. Yes. It's a definitely a different darker tale from what they uh, originally started off with mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but uh yeah it gets gets pretty intense no i i've heard good things about uh ninja turtles especially mm -hmm. the idw ninja turtle stuff so i was curious as you're a turtles fan yes yes i it's really good there's like i, I don't want to spoil much for it if you're gonna pick it up but uh there's one instance uh, in the uh, in the series that happened a a very uh, heartbreaking moment with the brothers and Splinter and I, I not gonna lie tears did roll down my face I oh. cried a little oh and, yeah no, it's, uh... <laughs> do do I need to read anything prior to that or that's just start there and I'm good. Uh, or do I just need to know that they're Ninja Turtles? Uh, it's it's a lot of fun when you could see the closeness of the brothers. You could tell, like, oh, hey, they're a loving family. So I think you should start with Volume 1 and work your way up to it. Oh, that's what I meant. But yeah. I can start with that new, that new yeah. one. Okay, yeah. cool. Because right. it's a new uh, jump start, basically. Nice. For okay. the whole universe. Yep. Well, very informative. I feel like it made I, I made it sound just now like I did that just <laughs> to like talk about Ninja Turtles, but I kind of did because yeah. I was curious. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there, there was Nick Paul. If you remember Nick Paul, he was obsessed with the turtles as well. I do. And remember he Nick would. Paul. Uh, yeah, he shout out. Nick is awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Follow on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. <laughs> but uh, yeah, he he loved the turtles just as much as I did, maybe even more. But he does have like a little pizza slice tattoo on him. Nice, nice. Uh, yeah. Well, very good. Uh, very good. Number yeah. two, sir. Yeah. All right. <laughs> um, since uh, I already brought up Seven Soldiers, I'll bring it up again. Uh, Frankenstein. And I knew you were gonna say that. <laughs> he's the most ridiculous character <laughs> ever. It's, it's literally just Frankenstein's monster. Uh, saying all sorts of over the top nonsense, um, and he wields like the angel Michael's sword and has like a pistol, and just it's ridiculous. I chose him not so much for depth, but more for just like <laughs> the the sheer amazing artwork yeah, that they show. <laughs> how how yeah, he goes to Mars. He rides a Martian steed. It's it's like the silliest. Uh, I don't know. There's something about it that I very much enjoy. So Frankenstein. I think there is a follow up series actually by maybe Jeff Lemire that I need to check out. I think it's called like Agents of Shade, Frankenstein and Agents of Shade or something. So I will definitely look at it. You know, you know it's funny. Uh... <laughs> I think you did send me the picture of him riding that steed and you're like, what is this? Look at the ridiculousness of this of this volume. I'm like, what? It's like what a nuke? Like wasn't it like a nuke blast in the background? Yes. Yes. And, that sounds and, right. Sorry, spoiler alert, but, but that's yeah. all I saw in the picture. I was like, oh my God. This is pretty intense. 
And that's another reason why you should read uh, Seven Soldiers. If you want, uh, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, more Frank, clarity. Frankenstein more depth, yeah. traveling to Mars and then nuking stuff. <laughs> just causing mayhem. Yeah. On other planets. And also, like, he just, I wish I had it in front of me. He just says, like, the most ridiculous uh, <laughs> poetic things. Like, they're very, uh, I mean, they're things no one would say in real life. You know, they're almost like action movie star mm-hmm. like monologues. You see, when you said poetic things, I automatically thought like, oh, that makes sense. Since uh, Mary, was it Mary Shelley, when she wrote them, like the whole, the whole uh, lingo was like a lot more proper. And when I thought, oh, hey, he might, they might have a call back to that. Just keeping them fancy at the way he speaks, but. Now that you said actiony film style, I was like, ah. Oh. No, I, maybe that, that was a bad way to put it. It's, <laughs> I think it is, it is very old timey. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But more just like, I think the timing of when he says things, like he has to like oh. say some cool one liner before he like kills somebody. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, just like every other uh, yeah. action here. Yeah. I, it's I can see it's so mean, over <laughs> the top. It's amazing. <laughs> Uh, I used to meet you. Oh, that was Mr. Freeze. Sorry, Matt. <laughs> uh, so, my number two would have to be uh, the Flash. This good choice. Uh, yeah, the Flash is one of my favorite, if not my uh, absolute top favorite DC character, because he all his life. He had like a bunch of bad things happen to him in his entire life. And yet he's still so upbeat and positive and he still believes in the good in people. Which is a uh, which is complete opposite to like the other two characters I'll say later on. Right, yeah. But uh <laughs> he he's like one of those heroes that you root for and like, yeah, go flash, yeah, take him down. But again, he's like the strongest and probably the most powerful of the whole DC universe. Cause he could go back in time and go forward in time. And there's some like neat tricks that he does with lightning. Like he shoots out lightning at some point, if he gets like the right speed and momentum. Yeah. Flash is like one of those characters that I have to, I don't know, sort of suspend all belief to read. Because yeah. part of me is like, how is he not beating everybody? Like, when you get fast enough where you can, like, go through time and space, yeah. <laughs> it's like, so, like, nobody should be able to beat you, right? I mean, <laughs> well, then there's I, also, like, his uh, exact opposite reverse flash, which is right. like, psh, clash. <laughs> but yeah, I could see your point. I mean, like, the only other person who could sort of match him would be Superman, but. Yeah, this he's a lot, hell of a lot faster than uh, than Superman. Right. I think we talked about uh, this a little bit ago, but uh, the button storyline when Reverse Flash yeah. beats up Batman. <laughs> yeah, it's so good. But that's what it, <laughs> it should is. be like. I mean, if they're yeah. that fast, no one else should stand a chance ever. Yeah. Like. Yeah, Batman has a plan for like everything, but what does he do against like someone you can't even like see? That? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who could anticipate like a thousand times faster than you can when your brain is in overdrive like that? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I'm like, oh, sweet. It, there's a what is it called? Uh, not Flashpoint. It's uh, there's this thing in the new in the show they call it in, like Flash Time, and it's pretty much how the reverse flash takes down Batman. It's just like so fast. And they do that in the show. I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> just like in the button. I also <laughs> like uh, how the speed force can do anything basically at this point. Like, yeah, <laughs> if you need the flash to do something, just chalk it up to the speed force. Like, yeah. <laughs> oh, they're stuck in the speed force. Like, what does that even mean? I don't know, but the flash, flash. can yeah, the flash would do it. Yeah. yeah, you can save them. <laughs> yeah. So I think oh, yeah. I accidentally deleted my list somehow. Oh, did. <laughs> yeah. But uh, while we're talking, man. Yeah, while we're Improvise. talking, justice <laughs> leaguers, 
I will assert uh, Green Lantern as a, a favorite character. Although I think I'm more like the concept of the Green Lanterns more than any individual Green Lantern. Like I think about Hal Jordan, I'm like he's he's all right. And then I think about Kyle Rayner, and I think he's all right. And then I think about Guy Gardner, I'm like <laughs> he's all right too. But really, it's more just well, I... the I think the the whole concept of the power rings and and the Green Lantern core, I like that concept. I I will say I think my favorite, if I had to choose one, Guy Gardner. What? Yeah, he's a he's a monster. Uh, uh, Are you a Rainer fan? I yeah. am. I yeah. am. I thought you were. <laughs> Said that like a numerous times, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Like, oh, yeah, Kyle Rayner, Kyle Rayner, yeah. And, or John I, Stewart. Oh, yeah, I forget John Stewart. Mm-hmm. John Stewart's probably the best, actually, now mm-hmm. that I think about it. Because, uh, I don't know, Hal is, he's all right for a little bit, but then yeah. in large doses, I'm like, oh, you're kind of a lot. Yeah. Kyle is always doubting himself. I'm like, come on, man. He's like a real person. All that <laughs> doubt. <laughs> and then uh, Guy is like so... Confident. arrogant yeah Man, like, uh, he's he's kind of like a stupider howl to be honest like, yeah <laughs> like he's a like angrier howl, too yeah, an angrier howl without an edit button mm-hmm. and then john stewart's just a normal dude and he doesn't yeah. doubt himself so that's why i give him one up over kyle because i can only take kyle being like oh i don't deserve the ring it mm-hmm. i wish Hal was back for so long i'm like come on man mm-hmm. it's it's <laughs> Step yeah, it up. Yeah, wrap it up. Wrap it up, guys. Wrap it I, up. I, yeah. All the well, self loathing <laughs> is getting annoying. Yeah. Uh, uh, Hal Jordan, I didn't like at all. Like, I I understand that. Yeah, he's like he's a cocky piece of poo, and I, there's like some instances you're like, oh, okay, cool, you're you're cool, Green Lantern. But there are other points, so I'm like, ah, oh, dude, no. And I just skip over his parts like a lot. I'm like, ah, oh, skip this, skip this. And Guy Gardner is just too much. Like he said, he's a more aggressive, angry version of Hal Jordan, but dumber. <laughs> I'm like, no. Uh, but I think, I think in a way, uh, I don't know. I think what I like about Guy is, I think you think he's dumb, but Guy, he has a way of coming out on top. You know, <laughs> more often than not. I don't know. I think he, I think he plays stupid. Uh, he could play yeah. all he wants. I'm just like, yeah, you're dumb. <laughs> and then Kyle, that... Kyle's just thinking about like art and not yeah. being enough. That's yeah. But then that's, ultimately, that's everybody thinks about yeah. <laughs> I mean, you think about art all the time when you uh, when you're reading Vagabond. You're like, oh, amazing. That's true. It yeah. is. It is amazing. Yeah. So I feel like I I said Green Lantern and then I totally trash like all the green lanterns oh, but, except like I said, for john stewart i think the <laughs> i think it's the the idea of the green mm-hmm. lanterns i really like that that side of the universe of the dc universe hmm. Hmm. i concur yes <laughs> yes Let's see uh my next one would have to be the sentinel of liberty Captain Whoa. America. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah, man. And if you know, and go ahead. At first, I thought you were saying their name was the Sentinel of Liberty. No. Like, Whoa. <laughs> what is this no. obscure character? Yeah. Yes. He fights for freedom wherever there's trouble. <laughs> uh, as you know, as a bunch, as everybody who know me know, Captain America is one of my favorite. Well, probably second favorite Marvel character ever created, because mm-hmm. uh, he's just—I'm going to quote the Captain America, uh, Chris Evans. He's just good for the sake of good, and and he's just like everything he does. It's like he doesn't care if it's uh, against people's uh, beliefs and whatnot. If he thinks it's right, and if it's right for a point. He'll just go and you know save people or do such and such things. Like 
after uh, 9-11, there was an issue, a comic uh, comic issue. I don't remember which one. But uh, he um, he's talking to this kid who's uh, obviously like Muslim descent of some kind. Mm-hmm. And he tells him, like, oh, hey, you should, uh, Captain America tells him, hey, you should just go home, uh, try to get off the street. He's looking out for the kid, and the kid tells him, like, he has nothing to worry about. He lived in America. He was born there, such and such, you know. And then he's walking home, and then these random American citizens see this kid, and he's like, they're blaming him for 9-11. So one guy is about to pull a knife on him, and then you see Captain America's shield break that knife. And then when you look up the the next... uh shot which will stay with me for like the end of my time is like Captain America doing his that amazing just posing there and then the backdrop is like I'm getting chills right now just imagining it it's so it's like so amazing that I'm like oh my god he's so great and then he tells the guys like son it's not this kid's fault happened terrorists did it basically telling them this that and the guy's like i'm sorry cap and it's always it's always cool to people like like everybody can respect captain america because he fought in world war ii and uh fought the nazis the uh red skull and this hydra and for all the years they still look up and respect this man like okay cap i'm sorry uh, I thought what I did was wrong, this that, and the other, but still heartbreaking. He he always under, he always understands where people are coming from. That was a very impassioned case yeah. for Captain America. <laughs> He's awesome. I feel like I don't uh, <laughs> share any of my others because I'm like <laughs> this guy's cool. Well, well but, yeah, I, I do. Yeah, I mean, I. Uh, I mean, I like Cap 2. I don't think I've read that issue, though. I remember reading an, a Spider-Man issue um, mm-hmm. right after September 11th um, where he, like, helps with the cleanup. That's a pretty good issue. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't, that one was a good one. Yeah, I don't remember the Cap one. but I, I gotta look for it. I know yeah. it's somewhere out there. I, I checked it out from the library. That's that's how old it was. It was like a right. long time ago. Back in the day. Yeah, back in the day. Back before you introduced me to Comixology and the <laughs> app and whatnot. <laughs> That's true. You could probably just like search it and find yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. I got to find the issue number and everything. But right. The, there's like a whole bunch of great Captain America stories out there where he's just... He could give a speech and everybody stops fighting. That's how... That's how great this one character is in the Marvel Universe. And I told you when we talked about great stories, Civil War, obviously I was on Cap's side because mm-hmm. in the film, he's right. Government people always change their needs to look out uh, what's in it for us and this, that, and the other. And then another one, uh, just there was just like this. Uh, it's under one of Captain America's greatest moments and he's talking to Nuke who is a Vietnam version of Captain America in the Ultimate Universe and he tells him like uh, like like why are you I think he's like shooting down immigrants or something and he's like why are you attacking immigrants kid uh, son he calls everybody son because that's how old he is he's like son (laughs) I'm I'm a son (laughs) I'm a son of an immigrant, and the guy's like, "What?" It's like, yeah, my parents were Irish. Or if I remember, he said Irish, and then that whole thing was just mind blowing to the to character the... Nuke. Yeah, huh. he's like, "What? Captain America is a son of an immigrant?" Like that kind of thing. Like, that's amazing. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> well, my uh, next one on my list. If if you you're good. Mm-hmm. Um, is the Wolverine. Wolverine is a good character. Um, Oddly enough, I think uh, 
Okay. One of the first comics I read uh, that really featured Wolverine and one of the first comics I read in general was uh, House of M, the uh, the event by Brian Michael Bendis. And it, it does involve a lot of characters, a lot of the X-Men, a lot of the Avengers. Mm-hmm. But to me, it's more a Wolverine story because he's the only one who remembers how things are supposed to be. Mm-hmm. I can't remember. Have you read House of M? I have. Yeah, I have. Yeah, just I don't know him in that uh, in that story. He's I just I think he's great. He's still the same character. He's kind of trying to solve the mystery of, you know, what's going on, why he's the only one who remembers. Um, There's one scene I really like where, you know, because in House of M, for those who don't know, uh, mutants are now the majority and humans are the minority and there's one scene where uh, these mutants are harassing this this human woman and Logan just uh, pulls out the claws and it just goes to the next scene and you're like oh okay. yeah, it's gonna be trouble <laughs> it's gonna be trouble and I like that because it shows you know he's just about protecting uh you know those who need protecting. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's not about mutant or human for him. Yeah. It's just uh, whoever needs saving. So I'm a fan of Wolverine. Uh, there, there are some stories I'm like, yeah, Wolverine, cool. And there are other stories I'm like, come on, guy, come on, <laughs> bub. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> come on, bub. But uh, like he, <laughs> he is a great character. I, I'm not gonna dispute that like uh, it's just like I think I read somewhere like he kills his own kids I'm like whoa what kind of thing like the only one he should have killed was like uh, what's his name Dakin 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 yeah. Dakin yeah like that's the one kid he should have just right off the top but everybody else is just like he's just killing all these kids and all his kids not just random kids his own kids <laughs> <laughs> because I think what he was he's scared of them being just like him Hmm. and i was like oh okay i mean that's that's not healthy (laughs) yeah no no i mean that's that's pretty bad that's pretty yeah it's pretty (laughs) great the first wolverine story i read was um it it was like a little quick read for me it was like the hulk versus wolverine the uh no not the very first Wolverine appearance, just like a few years, like two thousand, and that, and they both fought each other. That's all I remember. Like in a cabin with this guy with the kind of like Cobra Commander, but with the what's her name, Death Claw's hand or something. Oh, Lady know. Deathstrike. Yeah, like yeah. But it was a male version of her with like one oh. hand all clawed up. Yeah. And I was like, oh hey, this is pretty cool. And then I started reading the. Uh, his little run, mm. what is it? Return of Native. I I really love that one. And you know, obviously Wolverine Origins, Weapon X, and right, all this other stuff that he's done. It's like it's it's all cool when he's doing all the stuff in the past. I don't know why. I just think his past is so more interesting. Yeah, than yeah. the stuff he does in the future. I'm like, eh, metal claws, metal skeleton. Eh. <laughs> But back then, oh, bone claws! What? That's so cool. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. Mm-hmm. Do you have uh, another pick? Oh, I do, sir. So, uh, <laughs> a lot of mine are just regular, average Joes kind of people. I, I like. That's I good. tend to to go towards more of their storylines because we could relate. We're not super powered like them, and unless they have like certain tragic backgrounds, I guess. Uh, This one's going to be like Green Arrow for DC and Hawkeye and Marvel. I throw them together because they're both essentially the same person. Yeah. Except for one (laughs) in what's in, I think it's Greg Ruka's run. He's like poor. He buy like sort of poor. Like he's so cheap. Uh, Green Arrow he, or uh, uh, Hawkeye. Oh, Hawkeye. Hawkeye. Okay. Yeah, he's so cheap. He reuses his own arrows. 
<laughs> like I think in one instant he's actually picking them up from the ground and putting them back in this nice. uh, quiver. Yeah. I'm like, oh my god, I would I would do that too if I was him. Like, oh, oh, that was mine. Hey, bad guy, let me pull that out of your leg and just put it back in. And uh, yeah, and he's always been comical in his recent runs. He's been funny, mm. and uh, he started off as a villain uh, against the Avengers, I think, and then they he switched sides. And I thought, oh, that's cool. And in DC world, uh, Green Arrow is just the exact opposite. A rich boy who gets stuck on an island and fights off uh, crazy drug lords on that island. And he goes, I want to use my money and wealth to be a Robin Hood kind of thing. And and his, his earlier runs are amazing. The New 52 kind of killed it for me mm. the rebirth definitely killed it for me oh like i yeah Some i didn't words. yeah there's like certain reaper stories i'm like oh yeah and then others i'm like i'll just stick to the classic pre new 52 stuff right yeah. yeah i am not versed in green arrow at all i have heard i think it's mike grell his run is really good um and that's pre new 52 mm-hmm. I think that's kind of an older, well, older in quotes, maybe yeah. 80s, 80s run. I could be wrong about mm-hmm. that. But as for Hawkeye, uh, Matt Fraction's Hawkeye is one of my favorite <laughs> things just ever. Um, so I Hawkeye was on my list. That's another one where I said, uh, you know, other writers maybe handle him different, but yeah. specifically Matt Fraction's Hawkeye is pretty amazing it is <laughs> just like, like I, i've oh. been looking at it on my shelf i'm like i i should just reread that even though i have other yeah. things to read i want to read uh, <laughs> hawkeye yeah. which you uh you uh, introduced me to you're so, welcome by yeah. the way thank you're you welcome. it's because uh like the stuff that happened to him like all that bad luck rotten luck is kept it to any of us i'm like oh hey right. <laughs> oh, i lost a dollar and he's like oh i bought it apartment complex like oh crap now i gotta be a super to all these people while i'm fighting super villains like oh haha clint what bro 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 bro. next yeah bro 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 (laughs) yeah and his dog the whole thing how he gets that dog i i just loved it see what they uh what they need to do if a marvel person is listening right now hear me uh (laughs) they need to make a uh, hardcover, a deluxe edition for <laughs> for Kate Bishop's <laughs> Hawkeye because I have I have Matt Fraction's Hawkeye, mm-hmm. then I have I have both volumes of that. I have the one volume of Lemire, and I'm waiting for a hardcover of uh, uh, I think it's Kelly Thompson. Kelly Thompson's mm-hmm. uh, Hawkeye with Kate Bishop. I've heard it is also good, so they need to get on that. You because hear this, Marvel? This, this guy is the one who introduced me to digital, digital copy, and he wants you to they, to get out a uh, hard hard uh, hardcover copy. So that's right. Do it. Yeah, <laughs> do it. So yeah, I uh, I don't know. I would like that. <laughs> I'm trying to remember what my next. Uh, person was hmm oh i remember one <laughs> uh damian wayne <laughs> oh my goodness love him or hate him <laughs> damian wayne is uh, a, he's a great character uh he just because he's so annoying at first and he <laughs> kind of gets better as it goes but he's still kind of annoying damian wayne I don't know if he's my favorite Robin, but he's he's a, probably the most entertaining Robin. I don't know. You never he is. never quite sure what Damien's gonna do. Had... Also, spoilers for uh, Morrison's Batman with Damien, but I do think it's funny when Damien's like first introduced, and he's like he's being Robin with Batman. He just straight up murders. <laughs> like the first guy they go after and then bruce is like damien you can't 
you can't no do killing. that <laughs> like he totally excuses it he's just like oh i guess i didn't tell you or maybe i didn't make it clear <laughs> enough it's like any other person you'd be like yelling at him beating yeah, him up yeah putting them on trial but you're like oh damien not again <laughs> yeah you're, you were trained by a league of assassins and yeah you don't know better yet but yeah <laughs> i uh i'm a fan of damien wayne i some of his uh I, I mean, I've been somewhat vocal. I'm not the biggest fan of Tom King's Batman so far, but some of the one-liners Tom King has written for Damien are spot on. I'm like, okay, you're at least, you understand. <laughs> I, I will give you that. You understand Damien, so. You see, uh, that's my thing with Damien, too. I love his uh, his dialogue. Like, oh, he's so funny. He's a, yeah, he's a, obviously this kid was raised right by the, well, by the speech pattern, not by the killing people part. Yeah. That, that's wrong. Uh, the way he talks is like way too old for a nine-year-old kid when he starts out. Yeah, he and, just uh, he called Bruce. He yeah. was like father. Yeah, yeah, he's like father. Nobody calls their dad father. Like, hey, dad, daddy. Nobody's like father. I'm like, like whoa, what? Yeah. And, and he, the way he, he treats the <laughs> he treats Alfred what? awful. Like yeah. he says like the funniest <laughs> things, Alfred. Mm-hmm. The, the the way he treats all the other Robins, like the adopted sons, he's like, oh, you guys aren't real. You guys aren't his true heir. I'm right. the true heir. Like, this is all mine. And and it's just so funny how he treats every other person just like crap. Yeah. He, until I think he gets animals. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He treats oh, everyone like garbage. Cow. Yeah. <laughs> But you're right. He does like animals. He becomes like a vegetarian. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I'm uh, I'm a fan of Damien. Anytime he's in a scene, I'm like, oh, what, what's Damien going to say? <laughs> His interaction with uh, what's her name, Stephanie Brown's Batgirl, and that uh-huh. little run that she had was like hilarious. Like when uh, what what's her name, Dick Grayson was Batman, and obviously Damien Wayne was uh, Robin. His interactions with her mm-hmm. were like probably the best part in her run. Because <laughs> <laughs> he's just like, oh, like the stuff he's saying. Like, I, I remember this one part because I busted out laughing. Like, she tells him something about his height. And then he goes, oh, yeah, how come you stuff your bra? And I'm like, oh my God, this kid. Why, <laughs> why would he say that? <laughs> he just dishes up burns like all the yeah. time. Yeah. Some some of his uh I mean I keep both of us I think we're just, just like, oh yeah, he's funny without any well, I guess you just gave an example, but like yeah. anytime he's talking to uh to Grayson mm-hmm. uh when when Grayson is Batman is just amazing. Mm-hmm. Like zero respect. Yeah. <laughs> None whatsoever. You know, I honestly think Oh, and he calls him Richard. Only... That's yeah. he's like Richard. Yeah. <laughs> I think the only person he would he would actually respect and I don't think he has but respect and admire would probably be Jason Todd because mm-hmm. he's pretty much what Damian Wayne is going to grow up to be and that's like killing a bunch of people <laughs> right for being uh, all this all the bad stuff that they do it's true it's true <laughs> so the a spoiler is an effect I don't know if you read it um, where he uh, kicks the bucket. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, there's that there's that scene where, uh, and it breaks my heart, and I cried. I, I don't know why books, comic books like this, make me cry more than most films and whatnot. Uh, there's a scene where uh, he's about to go off and fight something. I don't remember who or what it was. And and Alfred tells him, no, don't go. And he tells him, okay. Like, he actually convinces him to stay with him. And uh, and it's like, it's a virtual reality simulation kind of thing. Like, how he could have done it to, uh, if things would have gone different. And Batman sees him, like, crying. And he's like, He's watching it through the screen. He, I think he like barely shows up in it, and he goes, "Oh, Alfred, I'm so sorry. I've been, uh, 
he says something like, I lost a son, but I also forgot you also lost a grandson kind of thing. And then they like hug and I'm like, oh my God, why? And it felt like <laughs> bawling tears. It's, it was such a sad, sad part. Yeah, I was pretty surprised that they went through and uh, killed Damien, but mm -hmm. you know, of course he mm -hmm. resurrected. So, <laughs> there, spoiler that alert! The, yeah, there's a good part of uh, <laughs> of King's Batman too when they're in they're eating at like that Bat Burger place or something, <laughs> and uh, I think he's Bruce is telling them to to be careful or maybe even leave town or something because Bane <laughs> is coming, and uh, Damien's like. <laughs> Basically, all of us here have been killed before, you know, like yeah. <laughs> Jason Todd's there. He's there. And. Uh, there's, oh, that's know. right. Yeah, I just found they that. Did funny. Like that. <laughs> and he's like, oh, they did have a point. Like, yeah, yeah we like, all die. Point. What's yeah. the point? Yeah. <laughs> oh, that kid. If I have a son, I want it to be just like that. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, my next. Uh, choice of my favorite character is probably the greatest thing Marvel's ever ever created. The Punisher, which again you and everybody knows knows about me is that I freaking love the Punisher. All the series runs, everything. I'm like trying to pick up books left and right of stuff I haven't read, either with its um comicsology or if it's like at the library or at the bookstores, everywhere. Uh, I just, I just really love that character. Fan, he watches his family die, and he uh, decides to take it out on the whole mob and whatnot because they witness a mob hit and they end up like slaughtering his family, and he snaps. And he just like goes off on this massive, massive killing spree. And uh <laughs> and he obviously there's like some superheroes he's crossover with who try to stop him and and uh he clashes a lot with Daredevil. If you've seen Daredevil season two, which I love that season because their I ideologies is just clashing head first all the time. And I'm like, yes. I love it. This is what it should have been. <laughs> like that's what I that's what I always want to see. Daredevil versus Punisher and I saw it in that and no disrespect to Batman versus Superman. I or maybe a little disrespect. I looked more forward to seeing Daredevil fight the Punisher than Batman versus Superman. Yeah, and I think the difference between the two is uh Superman and Batman's ideologies are not completely Yeah different you know different, Batman yeah. still won't kill i think overall mm -hmm. he has a more uh cynical look mm -hmm. at humanity maybe than superman but um he's not going to cross that line where punisher is definitely going to you know and he, i think he in a yeah. way he like tries to get you know murdoch to cross that line too yeah. you know kind of yeah. see what he's about yeah i think it's it's so good daredevil season two folks obviously watch season one if you want to know daredevil story but it's season two just like hit it out of the park because uh spoiler alert there's a scene in that in that season which is pulled i believe right out of garth enos run where he has him chained up and he's telling them Basically, hey, there's one round in there. You can't shoot the chains off. You can't throw the gun at me because it's taped around his hands. Like, so I'm going to kill this person and you have to try to stop me, either his life or mine. The difference was he was going to uh, snipe the guy walking out of the courthouse in the comic books, in the TV show he was going to kill the guy in front of him, like straight up right there on the roof with him. And obviously they had both two different outcomes. Punisher ends up shooting the guy walking out of the courthouse and knocks out Daredevil again when he tries to pull the trigger. There's no firing pin in it. 
season two, Daredevil shoots the chain off and it starts, you know, having a fight on the rooftops. Yeah, but, and <laughs> I, I, I'm I, glad you brought up Punisher. I still need to read mm-hmm. the finish reading those and get them back to yeah. you. Um, <laughs> but I actually, I like, because Garth Ennis had the Max run, but he had the, mm. the normal Punisher run first. Yeah. And that's what the Daredevil scenes with, because... Yeah, the Max Run doesn't have any superheroes. Um, I actually, I think I kind of maybe favor his uh, his non Max. So the uh, Marvel Knights. Yeah, oddly enough, I've, series, I've, yeah. I've read. I think it's like thirty ish, forty ish issues somewhere in there, mm-hmm. and I read all of them on Marvel Unlimited. And I, I, oddly, I really like Steve Dillon's art. It kind of grew on me. Yeah. Um. And I don't know, there's some crazy, strange stuff like him punching a polar bear. But uh, <laughs> hey, that polar know, bear this... had it coming. Yeah, he did. <laughs> but uh, I don't know. Oddly enough, I there there's moments that were so crazy and over the top that when the the hard hitting moments happened, they hit harder mm-hmm. to me. Mm-hmm. Whereas the max run is just so violent and emotional all the time uh-huh. is almost like kind of draining to me not it just i feel like those moments don't hit me as hard uh-huh. um but you know if in the other run if punisher can go from punching a polar bear to like <laughs> i don't know the next issue like morning i don't like i'm trying to think what really bummed me out there's like a episode where or not episode a uh, issue where he Basically hunts down like another former soldier. Oh yeah, he goes to that island. Yeah, the island of mercenaries and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. That's a pretty Uh, pretty issue. There, there's a couple of issues in 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 the different stories that I I really loved with the Punisher. Like, there's this one which I believe I let you borrow. Was where he goes to Mexico. And he yes. fights that, that one's good. The woman, or was it women in white or something like that? Yeah, and yeah. I loved it because anything involving Mexico I automatically love. <laughs> um, <laughs> there's another thing where he goes on a it's called Punisher War Zone. I think it's called Punisher War Zone. And he straight up goes against the Avengers and not just like the B team, it's Captain America, Thor, Iron Man, Spider Man, Black Widow, who else is in it? Wolverine. He basically takes them all to war trying to break free a woman that he worked with before. And, it, and it's so amazing and crazy that, uh, <laughs> that, that they all try to talk him out of doing, you know, talk, talk him out of uh, his mission. They just like, hey, just don't do this, don't do that. Just uh, you turn either turn yourself in or just give up or follow the rules, basically. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And he's like, uh, no, I'll do what I want. These guys need to get punished, and I love that one because you know he took them all on, and knowing that he's gonna lose, and he still did it. I mean, and uh, I. Th- I think my favorite Punisher moment um, is in Brubaker's Daredevil um, when mm-hmm. Matt Murdock is in jail um, and Kingpin is in jail and Bullseye is in jail. Like Punisher hears they're all mm-hmm. there and he's like, oh, I want to be there. <laughs> and like he just like, there's this guy, uh, I think he's like, I don't know, he's like threatening to kill somebody or you know has someone held up and Punisher just like takes him out right in front of the police <laughs> and then he goes and turns himself in he's like yeah I'm the yeah. Punisher you should <laughs> throw me in prison and then he just yeah. like goes in there and like there's like a some major spoilers for sorry yeah, Brew Baker, Brew Baker. Yeah. <laughs> um, there's like this giant uh you know, fight going on like prison break, and he's just like calmly like reading a book, and just like anyone <laughs> who comes near him 
Like, actually, no one comes near him. Yeah. It's like, oh, shoot, that's the Punisher. And he just, yeah. like, reads. Good stuff. Yeah. It, 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 it's, so, uh, it's so funny that you bring that up because there's this one issue called the uh, series. It was, like, a limited run called... um. What was it called? Uh, River of Blood, I think. I'm I'm not sure if that's what it is. But uh, he's in prison and he's trying to bust out, and he's just killing a bunch of prisoners on his way out. And and it's like that's the Punisher, guys. Come on, don't team up with him. He's just gonna end up killing all of you. Come on. Yeah. There's, there's no there's no saving grace, <laughs> and every criminal does the same thing. Like, hey, oh man, I swear I'll go straight. It's like, oh okay. Just in case, though, bam, right there, and it's just like this guy doesn't care. There's no, <laughs> there's no gray area. It's either right or wrong. Right. Yeah, that's yeah. true. The last story I want to say before you go on to uh, yours is a uh, Daredevil versus Punisher means to an end, mm-hmm. and it's. It's so great and amazing that I don't know if you read it yet, but if you haven't, I will bring it to you to read it. I have not read it. Oh, man, it's amazing. Uh, it's It takes in the whole Marvel Knights universe kind of thing. And again, extreme ideal clash in this one. And it's collateral damage does happen. Like Punisher gets a... Uh, uh, he he gets hit a little like emotionally I think because he has like flashbacks of his wife throughout hmm. the series and I'm like oh sweet but yeah definitely bring that one in for you <laughs> it's so good well I think uh, I I could have many people I could just keep going but I think maybe I'll do one more and i think i'd be remiss if i didn't say uh batman i've i've mentioned damien which one and, uh, bruce bruce <laughs> but uh i i like batman batman's a good character if you don't like batman i'm not sure like, what's wrong with you <laughs> how can you not like batman uh, uh... i don't know I'm not sure if I have like much to say about Batman. Just yeah, that I mean, he's everybody. He's, he's everybody likes Batman. Yeah. yeah. Well, there are some instances I'm like, oh no, Batman, no. <laughs> <laughs> I like I like Batman when he is so uh, obnoxiously, unrealistically the perfect man. <laughs> like, like when it's like I solved this case because of this. And you're like nobody would have. <laughs> known that what are you talking about <laughs> like nope. but at the same time i like uh i mean i've said this before but i like court of owls because he's like totally psychologically broken <laughs> in that story and it's like ah it's nice to see the guy who knows everything like <laughs> not know everything not know everything yeah <laughs> um because that would be like his worst nightmare i think like not <laughs> knowing something so um i like batman Batman's good. <laughs> I have to say, this is probably old news, sort of, but if you haven't read James Tinian or Tinian's uh, Detective Comics, I give that an A+. Plus. <laughs> that was some good Batman. I finished the last volume of his run. Oh, did you? Yeah. Oh, on nice. Hoopla. <laughs> Hoopla. Hoopla. So, I will probably be purchasing those at a <laughs> at some point. Why not wait for the deluxe? Well, there that's the, the, uh, <laughs> there there are currently uh, two deluxe editions out, um, with a third coming out soon, and possibly a fourth, maybe. What? Yeah, so <laughs> I need to get on it before they're yeah they're all gone, and then I have to wait <laughs> you know, five to ten years for like an omnibus or something. <laughs> Well, if DC's listening, they'll put it out as soon as they can. Um, yeah, Batman's Batman's uh, cool. He's good. I have a number of few Batman stories that I love. Uh, anything with Two Face, I will love because uh, you know they're good friends at first, and then become enemies down the line. Uh, 
Oh, uh, anything in general with Bane? Because mm. these he Batman is supposed to you know, be prepped for everything for the most part, and and the reason why I like Batman is because he has such a big rogues gallery. They all just like take him down their own kind of way. And he finds he finds these uh like like you said, like little clues out of nowhere, like nobody would think of, and he stops them or like he finds murder the murder case and whatnot. Like it's it's hard to describe for me, but Yeah. Like he He's a true detective to a point. Because mm-hmm. there are some parts where like, oh, Batman, it's not. Eh, it's, mm-hmm. uh, it's there's, there's no oversimplification here, guy. It's uh, this, that, and the other. But he, there are also some parts where I'm so irritated at him that I'm like, no, Batman. <laughs> like, I mean, uh, yeah, yeah, like uh, with the whole death of the family thing, he's keeping everybody. Uh, far away from them and all he had to do was bring them in so they wouldn't be so uh so on their own out there right and i think that is one of his flaws is keeping people Mm -hmm. kind of at arm's length even the justice league i mean like uh what is it tower of babel the story where uh i mean he has like ways everybody's weaknesses Yeah. yeah so He's not a very trusting person no. by his nature. Not at all. But that that just shows that's like how we all are. We're not very uh, trusting to begin with. I guess that's why everybody loves Batman because like he's he sees, like you said before, he sees the dark, grittiness of humanity as opposed to Superman seeing all the good and hope and whatnot. Mm-hmm. But in reality, we're all we're all Batman, like that. Like, ah, oh, that guy's gonna do this, or that guy's gonna do that. I don't know if we're <laughs> all Batman. I think maybe we're all uh, we're a mix of the two. <laughs> and some may, some may just <laughs> lean more to Batman. Yeah. Uh, are you saying you lean more to Superman, sir? I'm not saying that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying I think there are people yeah. who are who yeah. are like that. And good for them. Yeah. That's good. Good, good for those people. Uh, my last pick is going to be Tim Drake. He was on mine as well. Oh, was he? Yeah. He's, he's a, I think he's the only one who figured out that Bruce Wayne was Batman. Like, he literally could be the next Bruce Wayne style Batman because he's, uh, just as smart or if not in my opinion smarter than Bruce Wayne and uh he he uses a bow staff uh just like Donatello <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's uh he's funny he's smart he um uh, have you read Red Robin I have not what oh my goodness I have those two that's that little story arc is what made me fall in love with Tim Drake because it shows him like how, like, like how uh, I guess how smart he is. I'm trying to find a better way to say it, but brilliant. Yeah, how brilliant. Thank you. He is like he goes up. He goes up against Ra's al Ghul and his League of Assassins, and against another kind of league that happens to pop in to try to kill the assassins. And it's um, it's very interesting. It's really cool. Like I like how they do that. So since you are a Tim Drake fan, I will say this without giving any spoilers away. You will <laughs> definitely like Detective Comics. I would say it's oh. more um, about Tim Drake and Batwoman than anyone else. Mm-hmm. Like Batman's kind of a side character in it. I would say Tim Drake is probably the main character of, de- of Detective. Mm-hmm. So that's that's really yeah. when I was like, oh shoot, Tim Drake is yeah. kind of awesome. I did not know. Kinda? Come yes. on, man. <laughs> he is awesome. Yeah. 
Um, so I have like, I'm just going to say like honorable mentions because they were on there, but mm-hmm. you know, I feel like we had just talked about characters for a long time. Mm-hmm. Uh, Thor in Jason Aaron's God Butcher is awesome. He is also awesome in Jonathan Hickman's Avengers. And Nick Fury is awesome in Secret Warriors by Jonathan Hickman. There's a moment as like one of my favorite moments ever, and it's Nick Fury. And I think those are my two honorable mentions. And I also have Spider Man, but I haven't actually read a Spider Man comic in so long since I vowed to not read mm-hmm. Spider Man comics. After the whole after, uh... yeah, that I, I feel like I can't really <laughs> say Spider Man anymore. Yeah. Um, so yeah, honorable mention picks. Mm-hmm. Oh, and also any character who's good in Full Metal Alchemist. So, <laughs> read Full Metal. Oh, Alchemist. what about a uh, Vagabond? Huh? See, what that's the thing. Vagabond? Is is Musashi <laughs> good though? I mean, he's kind of just walking around Japan challenging people to duels. <laughs> like, it's that's not true, exactly. Man. He's like, I want to be invincible. I don't think that's like a goodness. It's not bad. He's not like a. It's not good. He's kind of just. Yeah, he's just bored. He yeah, wants to he... fight. Um, honorable mentions. I'd have to say. One of them has to be the. Uh, anybody in One Piece, like. Well, oh, okay. Luffy, Luffy, Zolo, Nami, Robin, Chopper. It pretty much the whole pirate cast in that one. Uh, another one has to be the comedian, because I thought he was really badass for the little time he was alive. And the Watchmen? Watchmen, yeah, the comedian. He is like, so I not. He was, yeah. <laughs> he's the opposite. Uh, oh my gosh, he's a vigilante, sir. Remember, he's a hero. He starts off as a hero. All right. Uh, what he, he does, what he does behind being a hero, that. He does Between some horrifying, <laughs> horrifying things. Uh, I, I challenge that one. Hey, uh, no, you don't. Challenge flag. <laughs> okay, continue. Another one has to be a a bunch of people's favorite Deadpool because he's just hilarious whenever he's on, like in the page and whatnot. And mm-hmm, mm-hmm. one of the I, I tell you this all the time. I tell anybody this. There's a run where it's called the Good, the Bad, the Ugly. Volume three of Deadpool, and this is probably one of the first books I I cried in. Oh wow! Yeah, it it's just so it's just so heartbreaking in his life. I'm like, oh god, no! Why? <laughs> I recommend you read it. You know, skip the other two volumes. Just go straight to read Volume three. Wait, no, ignore what I say. I think they're uh, for Comicsology think it's under unlimited on there oh, okay so check it out another one is ghost rider ah the ghost, ghost rider yes the ghost rider is amazing all the different all three are really good but i'm leaning more towards robbie reyes because you know i'm a little biased and he's mexican <laughs> <laughs> And the last one I have to say for my final honorable mention would have to be oh, I forget his name. The husband in Saga. Oh, yeah, Marco. Yeah, Marco and the ghost girl. I forget her name too. Uh, oh my god. Why am I drawing a blank on their names? The half body spirit. Shoot. Yeah, I can't think of her name either. <sighs> Well, both of them. I, I love yeah. them both. They're like, yeah. And then, then another honorable mention, since you brought up <laughs> Image, uh, Death in East of West. Oh, is awesome. yeah. Basically, the pale rider. Yeah. <laughs> the pale rider rides. So. And I could totally picture like Clint Eastwood or Sam Elliott doing that voice for him. Yeah. That'd be cool. Yeah. Um, and Hellboy. Hellboy oh, is great. another of my favorite. Yeah, I still need to read some uh, some of that. I hear only good things. Uh, I know. It's great things. You should be yeah. hearing great things. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, right, what what is our next 
what's our next episode? <laughs> or have uh, we not figured that out yet? Yes, we have. War of the Villains. Pretty oh, much okay. So same thing. The same thing, except for our favorite villains. Okay, I can do that. That may even yeah. be easier. I'm not even sure. Yeah. yeah. It, it could be. I mean, there's so many villains out there, and you'll probably pick Comedian as your villain. I mean, even though Adrian <laughs> V was the major villain in Watchmen. <laughs> I'm just saying uh, Comedian did some not okay things to hey, uh, several Damien, people. <laughs> Damien does a bunch of not okay things, and yet you let that one slide. Yeah. <laughs> But he's funny. <laughs> a comedian's not? <laughs> no. <laughs> well, thank you for listening, listeners. And yes, we'll uh, back next week with Clash of Villains. The War of the Villains. Oh, sorry. War. Oh, yeah. Today's yeah. Clash of Heroes. Yeah. War of the Villains. Yeah. So please subscribe, comment below tell your friends family nieces nephew <laughs> let us know your really... let us know yeah. your favorite heroes yeah yeah on the bottom mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. all right and this is big b and boy blue and we are signing off <laughs>